Today, folks, I want to provide some news updates surrounding Geovax. For those that are just being introduced to the company, Geovax is serving humanity through innovations in immunology. Geovax Labs is a clinical stage biotechnology company developing human vaccines and immunotherapies against infectious diseases and cancers uh, using novel proprietary platforms. Geovax trades on the NASDAQ under GOVX for around 66 cents a share, $16 million market cap. I want to dive into this a bit more in depthly. We'll hear from the CEO and just talk about their forefronted assets aspect of their pipeline. So if you're on a path to financial independence, if you love discovering stocks within the biotech space, join me on your journey. Go hit that subscribe button, folks. This company did reach out to me as part of sponsored content. I'm leaving the disclaimers down in the description. Obviously, these are opinions of my own and do not constitute financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. But if you're unaware of the company, they do have quite a diverse uh, pipeline with the forefront of what we're talking about today being updates on CMO4SI, which is focused on COVID-19 and a very specific specific part of COVID-19 patients, but they've also got head and neck cancer. They're working on a bunch of other stuff like Ebola, uh, Marburg, Zika, smallpox. So there's a lot that this company is trying to, you know, solve and help out uh, around the world. But firstly, if we just read into the most recent news, uh, they are committed to evidence-based vaccine safety and development of this GEO CMO4SI for vulner uh, vulnerable populations. And that's the key thing I want to zoom in on here. This is designed for vulnerable populations. And if we take a look at some of the comments from uh, the uh, recent uh, conference they were at. Before we look at the key takeaways, just looking at about CMO4SI, it's the next generation COVID-19 vaccine built on modified uh, Vaccinia and Cara uh, vector. Unlike first generation vaccines, this one encodes both the spike S and the nucleocapsid proteins of SARS uh, COV2 to drive broad cross variant and durable immune protection. The vaccine is currently in uh, basically three phase two clinical trials with one as a primary vaccine for immunocompromised patients with blood cancers or post uh, transplant status as a booster in CLL patients and basically as a more robust COVID-19 booster and previously uh, MNRA vaccinated a healthy adults. So if we take a look at the key takeaways from this conference, uh, basically their differentiated performance with the proportion of CLL patients receiving the CMO4SI that achieved the study's primary immune endpoint met the statistical requirement to continue enrollment, while those in the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine arm did not. This is a big deal. Enrollment shifted for the CMO4SI following interim analysis and following the recommendations of the Data Safety Monitoring Board. Further enrollment is proceeding exclusively uh, for this uh, CMO4SI arm. Now, the durable market uh, potential CLL patients represent a high need underserved market where first-generation COVID-19 vaccines are often inadequate and there's favorable safety profile with both vaccines were well tolerated with no grade three adverse events reported. And I want to hear from David Dodd. He is the CEO and chairman of the company. He says this data reinforces the value, uh, basically proposition of our multi-antigen MVA platform. And to get a little bit more in depth, he was recently on the Emerging Growth Conference channel and does provide some insight. I want you to just take a quick listen to. We have the three programs advancing the priority programs one is a geo mva which is our candidate as a vaccine for mpox smallpox vaccine actually is addressing a a global market opportunity that exceeds 11 billion dollars so there's a lot of opportunity there but that size of it also underscores how important it is and the need for such a product geo cmo for us one is our multi antigen vaccine for COVID-19. That again is addressing even a much larger opportunity. Primarily those patients around the world, not only just in the US, who, who have weakened immune systems because they may have blood cancers or other medical conditions. They just simply do not respond to what is currently authorized. The mRNA vaccines, the Novavax vaccines. Over 40 million adults fit that category in the US alone. 400 million people worldwide. And finally, gadeptin is our solid tumor cancer. Again, we're focused initially on head and neck, but this technology allows us to go after a very broad array of, of solid tumor cancers. Uh, we have milestones coming up throughout the remainder of this year, mostly in support of these three programs, but also our, our advanced technology. We're, we're moving forward to be able for infectious disease vaccines produce product much faster with greater yield 
and at a lower cost. So we have a lot of exciting things to go forward with. But I also wanted to, to mention, because people have asked us throughout with the new administration, do we align well with what is going on in the new administration out of HHS and others? In fact, we've actually mapped out how we align not only with just one particular political party, but across the, the board. When you look at the bipartisan focus towards America first, towards ensuring that we have multiple and more diverse platforms for uh, for a vaccine development and also that we have long-term safety behind them. So this slide basically is, is our response that demonstrates in our opinion that we align very well with the current administration as, as well as those in regardless of the party that are focused on seeing more diverse, more transparent, or development communications regarding the progress towards vaccines and making sure that more is being done as it should be done in the U.S. and we're not dependent on foreign entities. So that's sort of where we are in terms of our business goals. The milestones address that. Uh, the alignment shows where we are. So I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Now, of course, these were just brief news updates. There's a lot going on with this company. As news comes down the wire, we will update you here. So consider subscribing for those updates and letting me know what you think in that comment section below. But on that, as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.